Welcome to the Elephant Tales podcast from Wildlife SOS, where we bring you the intimate stories and behind the scenes perspectives with the people working to save India's wildlife. Be sure to sign up for news updates at wildlifesos.org slash subscribe. I'm Nikki Sharp, Executive Director of Wildlife SOS. In this third episode of Elephant Tales, we sit down with Director of Conservation Projects, Baiju Raj, at our Agra Bear Rescue Facility to chat about his childhood love of reptiles and how that love grew to compel him to help all wildlife. Baiju Raj has been handling snakes and other wild animals since the age of two. He is known at Wildlife SOS as the man who would go to the ends of the earth to save wildlife. Baiju began working with Wildlife SOS in 2005. He is a member of the IUCN's Crocodile Specialist Group and oversees conservation and research in India. You can see Baiju in action in our new Nat Geo Wild series. But today we are mostly going to be talking about his work saving India's reptiles and snakes. So to get things started, I would like to just introduce you to Baiju. Baiju, say hello. Hello. (laughs) Um, So Baiju, one of the first photos I ever saw of you is a pretty fascinating one. You are a child and you're holding a snake. And a lot of people out there are so afraid of snakes. And to see this photo, it is it is pretty startling. So tell us a little bit about your childhood and uh, why that photo was taken. Hi, hello. Uh, I I am actually fortunate to be a herpetologist from very young age because my father was a herpetologist and he taught me. He's my guru. So once we had a Russell's Viper delivered in our house and there were 92 babies and one was with double headed. So some of the eminent herpetologists from the country visited our house to see those um, vipers. And uh, uh, fortunately, my father gave a viper around my neck and some people clicked some pictures and after many, many years, they shared with me. So that is the picture which you had seen. So he taught me how to handle snakes and what we should be taking care and what they are and how to be with them and how how you can handle them without any fear. That's what I started with. And I remember I was like two and a half or three year old. Hmm. Yeah, you were definitely very young in that photo. So have you ever had a fear of snakes? I, I do have a fear of snake now, but not that time. We, as a child, we don't know anything. But now I do have a fear because I know the after effect, what happens. But I do take care very well to handle snakes and not to fiddle with them very, what do you call, like a show off or something. So it is very dangerous if it is bitten. Otherwise, otherwise, I'm not scared of snake. So, uh, Baiju, you have now handled like many different species of snakes, and a lot of what you've done has been rescuing snakes. Can you give us an idea of exactly how many snakes that you have handled or rescued in your career? Uh, exact number is I cannot give. Thousands of snakes I had rescued because. Uh, uh, like uh, till my master's I was in Kerala so every every day almost every day we rescue snakes because 365 days we get rescue calls in somebody's house snake and you know Kerala have so much vegetation and they crawl into houses and uh, field and uh, uh, chicken hoops so all these things happens so uh, I exactly cannot give the number of rescued snake I had rescued almost all the snakes like Cobra, Russell's Viper, one of the more uh, venomous species, Cobra, King Cobra, Russell's Viper, Sawscale Viper, Crate, everything. All, all the species I had handled and I had taken very care of them and to release them as soon as possible. So you were telling me something interesting today. You were saying that uh, the country in India, you have something like 30,000 people die of snake bites every uh, year. Is that accurate? The reported snake bite deaths are like 50,000, 
but it is much more than that the reported one are 50000 which is um, published by world health organization and it is also known as trop uh, neglected tropical disease because many of the people are unaware what they have to do one snake bite they go to like um, traditional healers and most of the people die one is that cause and the other one is people cannot afford because the snake anti venom is very very expensive and minimum 10 vial is the initial dose we have to administer to a person with a snake bite so many poor people and the village people cannot afford they do so that's why they go to a healer try to heal and most of them die because of that so uh all snake bites are not the same different snakes have different kinds of venom can you tell us about the different types of venomous snake bites yeah um, uh, we have four four uh, major four like big four we call uh, cobra russell's viper saw scale viper and uh, crate so cobra and crate these are neurotoxic venom which affect the central nervous system of the human body and uh, viper and saw scale viper venom affects hemotoxin they affect the kidney and the blood so these are two different kinds of venom so we are actually lucky that we have only four so we do make anti venom with these four species unlike other countries they are of like if you take about africa or india america we have n number of um, you know, venomous species where we have to make anti venoms of different snakes their venom potencies are all different but here what we the anti venom or the polyvalent venom which is administered now is a mixture of anti venom of four species so you don't have to carry the snake in india you just have to go to hospital you can get the same injection for all the species have you yourself ever been bitten I have once it is not bitten we call actually I was in 7th standard I was rescuing a cobra from the well and I was uh, just uh, putting him into the bag and it was my mistake I was holding bag in one hand I was putting the cobra with another hand so um by mistake it got a scratch it uh, the fangs were out so it got a scratch on my finger but it was a dry bite nothing happened to me a father was there and he observed me for almost an hour so nothing happened i didn't had to go to hospital that was the only bite or scratch i had so byju uh one of the things that fascinates me about you is that you will often it appears risk your life to save some of these snakes and um you just mentioned going down into a well so uh Uh, can you tell us some of these stories about the things you have done to try to get um a, a snake to re- to safety yeah i i had done many rescues in the well and uh, sometimes in uh, what you call people house bedroom everything but wells are little dangerous because uh, sometimes getting into a well we have to first uh, initially check whether oxygen is available inside the well because so what we do is when i was like child fifth standard onwards i started the rescue from outside because father used to allow me to rescue otherwise he used to give me to handle snakes so fifth to sixth standard onwards i started going into the well and other things so what we do is initially we just um, in a bucket we just put two three candles light the candles and just uh, lower it into the well so if the candle is burning well or light it is it doesn't get off that means oxygen is available in the well so you can get down otherwise what happen is sometimes there is some well they do they will not have oxygen and if you get into the well you will you can mm-hmm. die yourself not because of snake mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so these are all the things we have to be very careful about getting into a well but i had rescued many many snakes in the well cobra uh, one of my <laughs> very very interesting thing happened is um, Uh, so people called me for uh, in delhi i get into a well um, so uh, there was one snake down so i get into the well and i happened to see there were three crides about after we getting down in the border in the hole there were three crides so one by one i had to rescue all the four crides in one well <laughs> in delhi it happened and i had to take them all to release them into the natural habitat 
How do you find out about a snake being in a well? I mean, obviously, so, you know, you, someone must alert you to it. So how do people know that these animals are down there? So the thing is, people go to fetch water. So sometimes they see something crawling. So they see. Or sometimes people, what happened, many incidents happened. It like uh, uh, kids play cricket or football and the ball accidentally fell into a well or a small pond or something. Then they see a snake. So then when people alert, we go and uh, rescue. I think I heard of one situation of a really large python that was yes. down in a well. And that was interesting because the other thing that you have to worry about besides uh, air is light. And yes. so you went down to a deep well and tell us about that story. It was, uh, it was in Agra, Akbar Dome. You know, the monument tomb, the tomb of Akbar. So there was a very, very old well and there was a very small python from we see from up and the well was like 135 feet. So there was no nothing. The well was like damp and collapsed well. So we had to hire one fire service ladder. So they brought that. So I got, with, uh, got down with the ladder. And when I went there, it was like 12, 12 and a half feet python. From here, it was looking like a small python. So I thought I can easily grab it and come. So when I went down, it was like shocking. It was looks huge python. So it doesn't matter to me if it's a 15 feet python also. I can, I can manage it well. So I took him, I bagged him and then I first sent him up. Then when I started climbing, I was not able to breathe. It was so much to climb and my both hands were literally paining. So two step I used to climb and I uh, just put my neck down on one ladder and just leave my hand to get some time. And then I started slowly, slowly climbing up. So it was one of my riskiest um, rescue because uh, if a snake is in the well, nobody will help me. If I am something happened to me, people will be scared to get into the well. So that was one of the incident that it was very risky. And even a big video camera, the person couldn't completely shoot it because it was so deep and dark inside. So it was very challenging for me. And for me, it is interesting. That is different thing altogether, but it was a little challenging. Even I didn't have a harness that time. If something happened, so really then later I, I realized after coming up and and then I heard that story again, like shocking story that well was used to uh, throw the bodies uh, uh, like punishment. They used to kill the people and throw the bodies oh. in that well. Oh. <laughs> so this all I came to know later. <laughs> so it was a little, a little like interesting. So it was a good, good rescue, which I had done that. Well, that's actually uh, interesting in terms of there's a, a lot of wells throughout India and a lot of wildlife does, yeah, falls is... into these wells. So it's not just uh, snakes falling into wells. What's what's? Can you explain the situation with the wells in in India? There are many open wells. If you, I joined in wildlife SOS with this kind of rescue only one day. Uh, Karthik sir called me and told. Uh, like we were in dialogues in between Joe's and Karthik sir. So he called me and asked me whether you can rescue a crocodile. There is a crocodile in a school pond. Mm. So some kids were playing football and the ball went inside the pond and there was a big crocodile, five, five and a half feet crocodile. So he told, he called me once and asked me in 2004 it was, so I was doing my masters. So I told yes, definitely. So I had to go around uh, 380 or 400 kilometers. I traveled there. I went. Then uh, Joe's came down from Delhi and then we rescued the crocodile. That was my first mm -hmm. rescue, mm -hmm. even though I was not a part of Wild of SOS. Then, then they asked me whether I'm interested in joining and sell like that. But having said this, many, many animals fall in the well. I myself had rescued hyena civet cats, jungle cats, blue bulls, deers, uh, owls, 
many many things many things fall down in the well because some things said uh, which i had seen that they had scared people chase them and when they come to the village and they run havoc like they can't they don't just don't know where they are running so accidentally they fall even leopard leopards i had not rescued a leopard in the well but i had rescued a leopard in, on the tree but uh, well it is very sad actually to see animals in the well and sometimes they break their spinal cord and spine and head and many things many of them survive many of them mm-hmm. don't survive mm-hmm. that is also there uh so byju uh, one of the things i i understand you're also doing is you're just trying to educate people about uh snakes throughout india how to you know how to identify them and how to uh avoid a snake bite um so tell me a little bit about your efforts to create more awareness around um snakes and other reptiles throughout india uh, see when talking about animals i love all the animals but snakes are my first priority so i feel very sorry for them because if you beat them they don't even attack you they can't even cry they can't even express their feeling they just die with silence so what i feel i'll try to explain that from years and years and generations and generation we are coexisting with the species and with snakes and snakes are very very important in your backyard because once you, snakes only only snakes can manage your rodent population which cause you more danger the rat urine and rat feces in your any food or anything they cause more danger than snakes so we educate people in that way that they are very useful they kill they eat your rodents they are they maintain your ecosystem balance their the ecosystem and all but some people understand and some people don't so what now we are trying to create and look into kids because if you educate kids what um, it's a very interesting story um in the awareness i take my daughter to go and play in a garden nearby it's in a colony astra city where we live in the colony sorry the the whole um, volunteers and all live in a colony so one day while she was playing she's uh, like she was 2 year old then so so many kids came running and told there is a small pond a fountain pond is there so um, there was a monitor lizard in that so i then kids came and they started throwing stones at that uh, monitor lizard so i i ran towards that and so then kids told mother and father all scared they, that monitor lizard they considered monitor lizards are highly poisonous so what i did is i just just lay down and just took the monitor lizard from the water people were screaming i just gave to my daughters in my daughter's hand she was only 2 year old so all the kids were shocked then i asked and called them and then they all came down they started touching i told it is non venomous non poisonous don't need to worry see if she can handle you all can and you will not believe some grown ups came and kids were literally telling you all told this were very poisonous see we are all handling this that is what i want to do change because kids are the people who can change and then they were literally shouting at their parents see how many times we had thrown stones at them and you were telling this don't go near we are all handling that so this is what change we are looking into because the youngsters we have to really educate them so if if it was not there we, they will not believe me if i had not given to my daughter or if i didn't handle it they will think okay they are telling simply lie So you're basically trying to give people a positive experience in exactly. the education, exactly. right? If if in the field if whenever I do a rescue I try I try to make them understand I try to make them feel a snake because we cannot carry snake and go to for awareness program I'm just against that but the problem is but the thing is that you can make them feel or touch a snake when it is rescued before it is released so they will feel good they will think that we shouldn't kill or we should not kill the animal that's what byju you were saying earlier that uh, a lot of the mm-hmm. conflicts that people have with snakes the reason why they get bit is not that they're out in the forest and get bit by snakes that they often end up in people's homes is that correct yeah uh, if we if we talk about um, 
snake conflict i always think one of the major conflict in in the country are snake and human because they crawl into the houses because most of the houses they don't clean properly they make it a dump yard and keep things so what happened it is always a welcoming place for the rats and wherever rats are there snakes crawl into that to eat the rats and not to uh, kill people or anything their intention is to go to the house to eat rat and for a shelter accidentally people started cleaning or searching something so they get bitten and this is really really making trouble if the forest people are getting bitten all the forest people work inside should get snake bites but very very i don't know whether i had in this many years i had heard about anybody in the forest person or a ranger or a forester getting a snake bite in the forest only people who snake bites are from the houses maybe in the farm or in the uh, godowns and uh, store rooms and other places i i had uh, like two years back i came across a call a boy a boy's um, like bag was hanging it's a labor boy he was like only 16 or 18 year old boy so morning he went and took some mobile from his bag and there was a cobra inside that he got bitten and they took him to all villages and everywhere then they called me and told sir there is a snake bite we don't know which snake it is and when we went i sent my staff and when we went it was a big 5 foot cobra and we rescued him and brought him and i asked about what about the snake bite and by the time they had taken all to different places and that boy died before reaching hospital so this is what lack of awareness we have in the country many of them don't go to hospital they take it to a pranic healing and this this actually happens is because of a superstitious belief we have that the healers can cure the snake happens bites so this why 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 this happen is out of 275 species of snake four we have major four so you can if you can divide that you can understand the percentage of snake bite so if if a 100 people are bitten by snake not even one person will be sometimes bitten by a venomous snake so if if like for example you are a healer so 100 people had come to you all you had saved because they are all non venomous mm-hmm. snake and the one person you couldn't save is a venomous mm-hmm. snake so the real bite is only one so what what is spread the news or message around the society or community okay nikki had very good experience she had saved 100 people only one person had died i say so this is what happened right so that one person doesn't matter to uh, people compared to 100 people so not everybody has the ability by you to call you to come rescue these snakes so if there are people who are interested in getting more information about knowing the snakes or knowing what to do if they see a snake what what advice would you give them uh, see we usually tell them not to get panic don't go near the snake observe the snake see whether the snake is moving or whether the snake is going into a corner or something so then then they can call us if it is in their backyard we always try to just ask them to send a picture if it is a rat snake we try to explain see it's a rat snake this non venomous don't worry about that it will not do anything to you so some people understand some people tell okay it is my daughter is there my baby is there i don't want snake in my backyard please remove it otherwise i'm going to kill it so when it come to kill the snake it is better to take the snake away from his house and remove uh, leave it little far from that area and that is what we do but we always tell people not to go near the snake uh, touch with stick and see whether it is a snake dead or alive whether it is a cobra because of uh, now social medias and other things many people are getting bitten like snake handlers and rescuers are more dying than a normal people now because they want to show off and they want to kiss a cobra bite a cobra all these things so my many of my known people had passed away because of this accident biting by snakes and uh, other things well no discussion in india about snakes would be complete without talking about snake charmers yes 
So Baiju, can you tell us, uh, for most people who might not have ever seen a snake charmer, what, what is going on with snake charming in India? See, from generations and generations, we have Lord Shiva. He is with the snake around his neck. Actually, in India, there are, uh, there are different ways of conservation. We, people were, see, we relate initial days. We didn't have like conservation act and rule and law and everything in India. So in olden days, people related one animal to a one god. So they thought it is a conservation. That is what they did for conservation. So they think, okay, tiger is protected because tiger is related to with goddess Lakshmi or goddess Durga. So people will think, okay, I should not kill a snake because it is related to Lord Shiva. If you come, if you visited Kerala or if you visit Kerala, you can see sacred groves. There are places where you can see plenty of snakes and which is completely protected. That is one of sacred groves. So this this happens like this. So relating to that, a, a community called snake charmers or saperas, they are the snake handlers. They poach the snakes from the forest. They defang them and pull out their venom glands, uh, fangs, everything. They keep them thirsty for a week or 10 days and then take the snake for snake charming and shows and Nag Panjami, there is a big festival, Lord Shiva's festival going on. So this time hundreds of snakes we rescue and not even one can survive because once you remove a venom gland and a fan, the snakes cannot eat or digest food. So they die. So this is what now we are doing. You will not believe when we came to Agra, in, uh, when I was posted in Agra 2008, uh, it was very hard to rescue snakes from the snake charmers because now if you go to temple, even the temple the, the main pundit of the temple also allow us to uh, um, catch snake charmers because of this. Because we started um, giving complete idea of what is happening with the snakes to the main uh, person of the temple. So he is aware and he himself will call and tell now. See snake charmers are here. Come and arrest them. Come and rescue the snakes. So that is what we had made the changes. And it is one of the very, very, very sad thing happening between the, uh, with the snakes. So Baiju, um, we're about ready to close. Do you have any final words you'd like to, to give um, before we end this interview? Uh, I, I want people to understand about snakes. They should not be scared about snakes, but they should be, they should, they should be, they should know about snakes, then only they can come closer to snakes. Or coming to all the species, what I feel is people should understand about the species. I, I always feel like if you know about the species, you can be little, what do you call, uh, you will be sure, okay, these species are this. So people should be aware, we should educate, uh, We I am trying and we should educate the young youngsters to be more, um, Passionate and compassion towards animal. Compassion towards animals are more, more, which we lack now because rather than throwing stone on a dog, it is better to give a biscuit to a dog. Mm -hmm. That is what I feel. The dog will not bite you. The dog will only take the biscuit and wag tail. So that is what we need to um, inject compassion in people. That is what I feel. Thank you. Well, thank you, Baiju. I think I speak for everybody when uh, I'd like to say that you really are a hero for wildlife in India. And um, if you'd like to know more about Baiju, uh, be sure to go to the website wildlifesos.org. We do have a little bit of information about him on the website. You can also see him in the National Geographic Wild TV series, which is India's Jungle Heroes. So thank you so much for tuning in and uh, we'll talk to you next time. If you would like to learn more about Wildlife SOS or give to support the rescue and long-term care of the elephants, bears, leopards, and other wildlife at our sanctuaries, please visit wildlifesos.org. We hope our new podcast series helps brighten your day and warm your heart with the tremendous impact we can make together. Thanks for listening.